So Redis uh, serves three purpose. Probably you can use Redis as a database, uh, which I'm not going to use today uh, for you know uh, storage and retrieval of data in the Redis database. But what we're going to do with Redis today is use the Redis cache server. So uh, this is the main purpose of uh, this tutorial. And um, also, uh, if time permits, uh, we're gonna see how to make use of enough you know, pub sub service uh, from Redis. So, however, uh, for caching purpose, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first install uh, Redis uh, server. So, so this is the screen where I'm you know um, installing Redis server. So let's install this. So I'm gonna have, you know, uh, hit this command in, in the command prompt, choco install Redis 64. Now it's gonna you know, give me this console. It's gonna ask me a you know, few questions. I'm gonna say yes. Now you can see an already is being installed, already server being installed over here. All right, so it says Redis is installed. Now, all right, let me see if this is being connected. So now once Redis is installed, you got to say ping and I'm going to get the response pong. That means Redis server is enabled and it is up and running. From now uh, you can you know, uh, use Redis uh, for caching or any other purpose, right? All right, so now we're going to see how to you know, integrate this Redis with Visual Studio and your .NET Core application, right? So now I'm, I'm going to fire up this Visual Studio and I'm going to you know, include some dependencies. So I'm going to say, I'm going to search for the Nugget package. So if you search for Stack Exchange Redis, now you're gonna choose this one, Microsoft dot extension dot caching dot Stack Exchange Redis. So you're gonna install this so that Redis caching uh, would be made enabled, would be made available uh, to use from your uh, .NET Core application. All right, so now this, was installed and uh, now uh, let me tell you the agenda what we're gonna achieve so let me fire up my controller once redis uh, server is up and running so now we'll go on see all right so once redis server is up and running we're gonna see how to integrate with uh, your application and then enough you know, make use of this Redis cache, right? So now uh, for this purpose, what I've done is I've taken um, a controller wherein what this controller basically does is, um, you know, it, it's gonna you know, uh, go to MongoDB and you know, go to this uh, database called e-commerce and then go to the collection called products and then uh, get the products details from that. And it's gonna you know, uh, retrieve the details and show it on the screen. Right, so now, uh, so once we have this dependencies of you know, uh, installed of this particular you know, for dependency caching dot stack exchange Redis, uh, we're gonna see have to make use of that. All right, uh, so for that we're gonna inject um, an interface or uh, inject a service called uh, a distributed cache. This is the one, and we have injected this uh, in your um, constructor. Right, uh, so uh, the very first thing you know, uh, to do is to uh, check 
whether you know this cache has any data or not so uh, uh, let me you know comment this one out so that uh, any data which is available doesn't get deleted from the cache right so now um, this is uh, a line where in, you know, uh, you're gonna check the data um, this uh, distributed cache dot get a sync uh, it takes a parameter of um, a key or uh, let's say for example you know you're gonna check something uh, with an ID or something like that probably you can uh, pass that parameter over here so I have no ID to be passed so I have kept it blank <coughs> so this get a sync is gonna check whether I'm uh, this is gonna retrieve the data from the cache and here we have if and else condition and in this if condition we are gonna check whether there is a data in this uh, cache or not so this encoded products would hold the data from the cache and if it's available probably it will you know deserialize it to your JSON object and then uh, I'm sorry deserialize it to uh, an I number of uh, products and then um, you know uh, uh, show the result on the screen all right if there is no data present in the cache um, um, it goes through all these um, instructions wherein uh, you're gonna refer to MongoDB, get the collection from the MongoDB, uh, get the enough uh, resultant from the MongoDB collection, and then um, uh, put this data into the cache. So now, how are you going to put this data into the cache? So we have set a sync command uh, or method, which would you know, uh, take three parameters. One is your key. In this case, we don't have any key or ID to be passed in as a parameter. And we're gonna you know, um, have this, um, uh, you know, uh, the data which is coming in from MongoDB. So we're gonna pass this data, uh, which is of course you know, uh, encoded. Uh, and then we're gonna pass options. So our option, uh, we have you know, uh, uh, sli uh, sliding expiration time and then absolute expiration time. Meaning, let's say we have set absolute expiration time. So after uh, this time, um, any data which is present in the cache would be deleted. So you won't have to um, you know, keep uh, data in the cache forever, right? So after some time, that should get expired. I'm sorry, uh, it should get deleted. So once this expiration uh, time is up, then uh, it would be automatically deleted. So very simple thing. A, it's gonna get the data from the cache and uh, display it on the screen. Um, so this if condition is gonna check whether there's something in the cache. If there's nothing in the cache, then probably follow the conventional way. Uh, put everything uh, uh, in the cache which is retrieved from the database and then uh, uh, show it on the screen. So on the subsequent request, your data would be fetched from the cache itself. So that way it would be uh, much faster all right so let's you know, uh, run this out and check whether it's running in an intended form whether it's giving you the intended results from the cache or not right all right let me navigate to the specific API Right here we are. So we are in this <coughs> uh, get method. Uh, let me show you the step by step execution. So I'm gonna say F10. All right. So let's see if there's anything in the cache. Right. So there's nothing in this cache. So it says null. So it's gonna go to your else part. And then get the data from the database. So there are 23 items, right? So these are the data. So now after this, it's gonna get encoded. And we're gonna set this expiration time for this cache and hold of uh, the object is gonna go to this particular cache we are here at this step wherein set async method 
uh, is a method which is gonna you know, dump your object data to your cache so I'm gonna execute that now if you see uh, all right So now I'm gonna hit this method again. So now if you see, we have you know, the data in the cache. So now it's gonna retrieve from the cache. And then display it on the screen. All right, so this is the one which is coming in from the cache. So this is how simple is it so that, you know, um, <coughs> integration of Redis cache is made easier. Uh, you just have to write a couple of lines to, you know, get the data from the cache. And if not, you know, set the data into the cache. Where is it? This is the one. Yep. Right. So thank you, guys.